Now, as a very proud Connecticut ambassador, I'm delighted to be hosting this episode on the brand's behalf to interview Ben and Tom Curry, twin brothers, Sail Shark back rows, and of course, England rugby internationals. Guys, thank you so much for doing this firstly. How are you both? Thank you for having us on. Um, no, I'm very well, thank you. All good, all good. Tom, you're obviously focusing on returning to full health. What does your recovery sort of strategy look like? And also, I guess, nutritionally as well? For the first week, it was just kind of rest. Yesterday started the more intense sort of side of it. Usually you can be stuck in crutches or, you know, a brace with this. It's kind of, I can do what I want as long as it doesn't hurt it. So I'm pretty mobile. The biggest thing is not trying to rush it. Um, and I think in sport and as sportsmen, you can probably feel a bit frustrated when you see, you know, Ben and the lads training outside and, and you're stuck in a gym. So it's about kind of taking it day by day and, and kind of putting the ego aside. When you were told you were going to be captain and the honour of being named captain for both of those games, Scotland and Italy, what was your reaction? How did you feel? I couldn't quite believe it, to be honest. I found out quite late in the week. It was like a Thursday, Friday, so I didn't really have much time to think about it. We all kind of knew one of us kind of had to do it. So as a leadership group, we, we had a properly good foundation built. I was going to say, what, what do you feel that you've taken away from being the leader in that respect, as well as a player? It's, it's quite, quite a lot to take on, isn't it? I think in terms of kind of learning, it's probably the delegating bit. Um, I wouldn't say kind of I'm the best talker. My thing's probably the doing bit. Um, so for me, it's kind of learning, A, when's the right time to speak? Because you obviously have to, you can't be quiet your whole life. Um, but B is kind of the skill of relying on other people. Um, oh, there's a cat jumping around in the background. Oh my goodness, I love it, brilliant. <laughs> and just talking of leadership, Ben, what leadership traits do you think Tom has? I think the biggest thing about leadership is doing first. I think everyone's probably been in that situation where you have someone who's talking and not kind of doing it. So I think the most important thing about leading is you've got to kind of set the standard with your actions first. So I think, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Oh, that's very nice, thank you. Very helpful. You said it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have been, as a family, so proud of him. Yeah, it's a pretty incredible experience. Obviously for Tom and for the family, I think, yeah, we went up to Scotland. Yeah, it was very surreal, but yeah, very proud. The Six Nations is, is, is a special tournament, you know, the intensity of it. The match, you know, particularly against Ireland, how do you sort of deal with that and that resilience to keep going, even when you're knocked down, I guess? We had a proper, clear game plan and the character to be able to get back into the game. You know, sport's sport, it's never always going to be perfect. And to be fair, we spoke about that. I think we got ourselves back into the game. It shows resilience and character. And I think that comes from, you know, being able to do it for the guy either side of you. It sounds cliche, but, you know, it really gives you that extra few percent. And we did well to get back into the game. It's just a few errors towards the end of the game probably cost us. So, guys, let's talk about Sail Sharks. Neither of you are strangers to, I guess, impressive leaders given the calibre of the Sail coaching. What does that kind of experience bring to you and also, I guess, to the team. Ben, let's start with you on this. Yeah, especially with Alex coming in last year, um, it was incredible to kind of work under him. Obviously, people aren't stranger to what he's achieved with Saracens. He knows exactly what he wants, and for a player, that's perfect. And with the general stuff around, like that team mentality, yeah, it's incredible to kind of work with someone who's kind of, yeah, achieved what he's achieved, and now he's kind of doing that with us, and it's, yeah, it's really exciting to be a part of. And Tom, to see how far Sale have grown in the last few years. You must be very proud of, of being a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, lads come in from when they're 18 to make their debuts to, you know, playing for England. So yeah, to kind of have that, as Ben talked talk about, that culture of everyone coming through together, especially with the blend of the experienced players. You know, you, you got your Manu, your Faf, um, Luis Diego, you know, people like that who've won World Cups. And yeah, it's a really exciting time, like Ben said. The level of talent and competitiveness within the English Premiership is, is pretty unique, wouldn't you agree? I mean, why is that and what, what makes that so special, do you think? I think, like Tom said, the Premiership is not just sale, the Premiership is completely different to when we first started six years ago. Um, it is really good when you kind of got Bristol coming up, London Irish now coming up and they're challenging, it's really exciting. That combined with young lads coming through, um, you look at kind of what the England pathway is producing at the minute, quite a lot in the back row to be honest, um, so it's pretty healthy, it's pretty big competition <laughs> oh yeah of course you, you see almost every week someone's had a great performance you see that and then other people's rise and, and it just kind of pushes and lifts everyone up now i want to ask you ben about place to be this is all about mental health isn't it just tell us exactly your role and and more about it really 
obviously a very big topic now, as it should be. For me, it's kind of raising that awareness to kind of raise Place to Be's profile, give as much support as possible to children who have to deal with that and give them the tools. So even for children who don't suffer with mental health issues, if they do in uh, adulthood, they have the tools to be able to deal with that. And just talking about the tools to, to help yourselves, I guess, in, in those high pressure situations. I mean, Tom, firstly, do you have a sort of way of dealing with it? Ben and I both started really young. You know, when you're thrown into it, you're just like, whoa, like, yes. let's, let's crack on. And so it never really kind of hit me until kind of a few years later where you kind of feel like you're starting to overthink things maybe before a game. So it's about simplifying it for me as much as possible. And we basically boiled it down to, it's about sprinting and getting up off the floor as quickly as possible. It's different for everyone, but if I can do those two things, then what am I actually kind of, what's there to think about? Seeing as both of your parents are school teachers, education must be high on the agenda. Now, is this true that one of you wanted to be a doctor and the other a vet? Is that right? Who was wanting to be what? Uh, yeah, I was the doctor, you were the vet. I think yeah, that was eight, yeah, that was years ago. I don't, know where, yeah, I don't know where you got How that you information. Found that out? Yeah. That's scary. What a different life that would be. I mean, do you ever sort of think this could have been a very different sort of way of life as well? Or do you just, is rugby like in, in you too much and you can't think of other sort of occupations, I guess? Yeah, like I said, rugby has always kind of been there. Um, as much as like we played a lot of rugby, cricket, uh, athletics, netball at one point, bowls in primary school. Rugby was kind of like always there. So I couldn't really imagine a life, it sounds a bit sad. Um, I couldn't really imagine a life playing without it. Tom, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously our dad was very much, you have to do your A-levels, you have to make sure you kind of focus on that as, as a backup plan. I mean, we were both going to go to Nottingham at one point. Um, yeah, we didn't even tell each other about that. Yeah, we were both randomly ending up at Nottingham. Ben was doing pharmacology and I was going to do geography, which probably wouldn't... Yeah, too bad. I think at that, at that point, I kind of knew we were do, yeah. doing the uni route. You mentioned your dad there, your dad playing professional rugby, your uncle playing for England. They must have inspired you massively uh, on, on the pitch, but off as well and helped you mentally, did they? Yeah, I think kind of, you know, we had our cousin as well. Our cousin played for Northampton Saints. Um, our other cousin played for Stoke City Football. And I've got, to shout, I've got to shout out my sister, she played Frisbee for GB. Yeah, we can't leave her out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll be very happy now. Yeah. Um, it's always been about that in, in the family. You, you grow to love it. Um, and I think that's come to fruition, I guess, with kind of where we're, we're all kind of at at the minute. I think everyone needs like an outlet for their competitiveness. <laughs> Are you two competitive? I, as, as twins? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot better. You, you, you mature anyway, you know, when you're under six, uh, <laughs> under 16s, um, you know, that guy's in the same position and it's like, oh, but now it's kind of like, you, you just want everyone to get better. And I, I guess it's the same with us. You want each other to get better because that competition it also makes you better. Guys, I want to get your thoughts on nutrition. What sort of drew you to Connecticut as a brand? What, it, what it, was it about them that made you want to work with them? It's, it's about quality. When you're, you're pushing your body so much every day to, to, to make sure that what you put in, in your body is, is going to be able to fuel that. The quality of the product compared to, to, to anything else w was the main driver. Ben, uh, what about you? Which particular products do you like? Is it the oat gain you like? Yeah, oat gain, yeah. That's, that's a big, yeah, that's it's a big thing. Every, I've, um, <laughs> it's basically like currency at sale. I've given so many to... Uh, friends and family because everyone yeah a lot I don't know a lot of people just want to get bigger and 600 it's the easiest 600 calories you ever get yeah everyone loves it and and Ben what what is it about the partnership that, that you've got Connecticut that you enjoy most well like Tom said apart from the quality it's the variety you mentioned the oat game but then for me uh, every morning uh, it's the Amigas the vitamin d3 spray like you said it is a lifestyle and they support all of that, whether, you, yeah, whether you're trying to put on masks like most rugby players are, or just a normal person, they, they can cater for that. Sail Sharks men and women are now in partnership with Connecticut. Women's Rugby Union is the fastest growing female sport, which is really brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, and I think it's really important for Sail to be a part of that. Uh, one of our owners, Michelle, she's a big driver, well, all our owners um, are massive drivers for it. and. I'm really, well, yeah, I'm proud to be a part of that and uh, yeah, we fully support them. And Tom, for you, I mean, I guess it's wonderful to be a part of a 
yeah, a club that really is sort of helping women's sport, putting women's sport on the map, especially rugby union. Oh, hugely. I think, you know, specifically in England, you know, how they're being able to facilitate the, the women's team and see them do so well. Um, it, it's, it's, it's brilliant for the sport, um, you know, not just for conversation, but for the sport. I, th I think being able to grow that and, and reach areas that it hasn't before is, is hugely exciting because there's so much untapped potential, no matter kind of what, what gender or, or, or what size or shape it, it is brilliant. And it's what rugby is all about. Um, so, yeah, it's brilliant. I just want to ask you any sort of parting advice for aspiring rugby players. What would you say to them? to keep them on the right track or to inspire them further, really? Like we, we kind of spoke about before is kind of keep your horizons as broad as you, as you can. Play as many sports as you can. Uh, like you said, we play football, cricket. To be honest, in the summer, we didn't even really touch rugby ball. We was all cricket. And I think that's massively important because at the end of the day, if you, it can relate back to rugby. And at the end of the day, it's, it's fun as well. I think uh, when you are growing up, it's important to enjoy it. And out gain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take as much out gain as you can. <laughs>